Guten Tag, meine Schule. Of course, that's German for good day, my students. I actually do speak German. My wife is half German, and we have relatives over there, and we spend a lot of time in Germany. But I want you guys to learn a German word today, or a German phrase, I should say. Sitz im Leben. Now, what I'd like you to do is actually take a minute and Google it. Because when you do, you'll find that this was a word used first time probably about 100 years ago. The actual translation means situation in life. But what it means in a theological sense is this. The scriptures, say the Old Testament, for example, they meant something to the original readers or the original hearers. The people that first heard those inspired words understood it in a context, in a situation in life. That's called the Sitzen Lieben. Let's take a practical example today. Let's say a thousand years from now, somebody is uncovering some literature here in America. And let's say they come across that little nursery rhyme, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe, and so forth and so on. If they had no idea of the context, they would just think it's kind of a silly rhyme, kind of nonsensical rhyme about toes. But the reality is, you and I would understand that has to do with children playing a game and deciding who's in the game or who's not in the game or who's on the team next or who's not on the team next, that it actually is regarding selection for some kind of a team or some kind of a, of a group. You would not know that if you didn't know the original context, the sits in Lieben, the situation in life in which it was written. The problem is a lot of people approach the Bible, got myself a nice big Bible here, and they approach it like it's a book of magic incantations. Now, I'm not really a fan of the Harry Potter series, though I don't have a problem with it. But I have friends who love and have seen most of the movies and read the books. But my concern is that sometimes we take an approach to the scriptures not unlike that fantasy series of books. I turn the book open. I find a verse. I read it. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you, give you hope and give you a future. Now, that's a great verse, and it's a great promise in many ways. But what did it mean to the original hearers of it, the people who heard it for the first time? Well, they were people, formerly from the promised land, from Israel and Judah, who were now in captivity, and they're thinking about what it was like back when they were in their land, and wondering would they ever get back there. They were in exile. And so the beginning of Jeremiah tells us how these people in captivity were nonetheless given hope. And even that passage in chapter 29 starts with a letter. And the reality is, what it was saying is, you may not even make it back, but your grandchildren just might. And God is promising them a hope and a future. So is it a promise? Absolutely. Is there good news there? Absolutely. But is it some kind of magical incantation that I can just grab out of context and claim for my own? Well, that's where we aren't doing the due diligence of finding the sits in Lieben, finding that original historical life context that the passage was originally intended for. So your assignment is to look up Sitz im Lieben. Let me find that again right here. Sitz im Lieben. And I want you to just think about how we tend to look at the scriptures more like a, a, a collection of incantations than we do contextual narratives, contextual stories, contextual portions of scripture that deal with a particular people in a particular time.